Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live here on World Harvest Television Network. And getting back into the news this week, I've been doing sharing some biblical insights with you guys here over the last several weeks, actually, I think the last month, in fact. Uh, trust that's been a blessing for you. And let me just encourage you, uh, those of you that are able, uh, internet friendly there, go check out our teaching channel on YouTube called Danoon Institute. And by the way, if it's a blessing to you, you'd like to be a part of this ministry and keep this broadcast on the air, as well as our prophetic insights on Israeli News Live, visit our website, israelinewslive.org or israelreturns.com. Your help is greatly appreciated in the endeavor we're doing here. Uh, let's get right back, though, into the news itself. The prophetic insights today called Biblical Consequences. We are talking about the events that are happening in the news right now and how that is shaping up biblically on the world stage. And I have discovered some incredible things from the book of Daniel I'm going to share with you as we look at what's happening over not only the Middle East, but the Far East with North Korea, with Syria, with Russia, the United States, that hidden king, uh, even Israel uh, involved in this as well. But we're going to share some incredible insights with you today. And let's get started. Let's not waste any time. Get right into this. Daniel chapter 11. And of course, we're going to go right to verse 44. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall affrighten him, and he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to take away many. Remember President Trump's tweet that was done on August the 8th of 2017. We are prepared to launch fire and fury on North Korea. Well, you know, I can't say that what President Trump is about to do is really uh, this as far as biblical prophecy right here. But I will say this. There is a hidden king, a Melchizedek that is involved in Daniel's prophecy, and he controls the forces of NATO. Uh, and he's the one that directs what's happening. He is that little horn, I believe, that you find over in the book of Daniel chapter 8. We're going to go into that later in this broadcast. I do believe that he is that same self person there that is conducting the military forces. So when President Trump made this uh, awkward statement about that he was about ready to uh, prepare to launch a fire and fury, it could have been that it was a key word biblically that may have been signifying the prophecy of Daniel 1144. Because after all, tidings out of the east and out of the north frighten him, cause him great anxiety. Causes who? The king of the north, that is. And the king of the north can't be Russia because it's tidings out of the east and the north that trouble him. So, can't be Russia. But at this point in time, what are we seeing? We're seeing also that Kim Jong-un on October the 10th, well, that's a little time pass if you're watching this on, uh, on World Harvest Television Network there. Been about a week since this all happened here. But, you know, his holiday is coming up. Tomorrow, as we're recording this, it'll be tomorrow, and there's always a great expectation that he's about to do something very significant. And of course, the news.com.au out of Australia says this is significant. It is the anniversary of the founding of, of its Communist Workers' Party party and the Kim dynasty of rulers. And so many times we know that uh, Kim Jong-un will do something, whether he's going to test another ICBM. Russia stating that that's what they anticipate that he was going to do this coming week was test an ICBM that would have the capability of reaching the mainland U.S. Uh, there's some, some suggestion that he may be planning on trying to test another nuclear or hydrogen bomb. Still, all these provocations here only driving President Trump more to the action about doing something about uh, Kim Jong-un. And as he has stated, he said Rex Tillerson was wasting his time. He said that the, the rocket man only knows one thing. And of course, that's war is what he's uh, hinting at there. But it wasn't so much that that troubled me is when we saw the ominous, uh, ominous message or the cryptic message that come from President Trump when he was gathered there uh, had all these military leaders there in this one room, and he says, this may be the calm 
before the storm. Uh, that's there on Fox News there. And he says, you guys know what this uh, represents. And he kind of shows all the, the, the military leaders there in the room. Uh, Trump gesturing to the commanders surrounding him as he made uh, that looping motion with his hand there. And he said, maybe it is the calm before the storm. One reporter asked him, what did he mean by that? What was the storm? Well, President Trump, Trump replied only, could be the calm before the storm. That's led, led to a lot of speculation that the president of the United States is about ready to give the green light to go against North Korea. In fact, Russian news agencies have declared exactly that. They do believe RT News has reported that the military drills the U.S. is about to conduct over there, uh, once again with South Korea, may actually be going to war and not just military drills. So a lot of concern going on there. And as we know, the U.S. has a formidable force throughout the entire region of the east there the guardian did an excellent job on pointing some of that out it says what uh, what is the U.S. military's presence in North Korea? The U.S. has nearly 40,000 personnel in Japan, 35,000 uh, in South Korea, and uses Guam and uh, as a permanent aircraft uh, carrier base there. They go on to say the Seventh Fleet headquarters in Japan. The Seventh Fleet is the largest of the U.S. Navy's deployed uh, sea forces with roughly 50 to 70 ships and submarines, 140 aircraft, and approximately 20 thousand sailors across the Indian Ocean to the Pacific. Uh, the USS Ronald Reagan, a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, a supercarrier that is, is permanently deployed uh, at uh, Yokosuka, Japan as the fleet's flagship carrier. The, the fleet also includes up to 14 destroyers and cruisers at any given time, some armed with ballistic missiles, interceptors, long-range Tomahawk land attack missiles, and anti-aircraft missiles. Up to 12 nuclear-powered submarines are also available in this region. And then it continues on. There are more U.S. military personnel serving in Japan than in any other country, according to the Department of Defense data, some nearly 40,000, uh, and, and are stationed across 112 bases, a uh, hangover from the Second World War from American forces occupied in Japan. Now, we won't save time. We won't go into the entire article there, but that's just kind of give you an idea of the military presence that is over there. So what is this whole issue about then when the scripture says over here in Daniel chapter 11, verse 44, but tidings out of the east and out of the north shall affrighten him, and he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and to utterly make away many. Now, mind you, in my opinion, President Trump is not the king of the north. That's a deep state member that runs the military. And that military deep state leadership that's running the military is taking its orders from that hidden king. In fact, the hidden king is a man, according to the biblical prophecies, he calls for peace, but he goes forth with his militaries to make war. In one place in an apocrypha writing, on this apocrypha, uh, apocalypse of Abraham, I believe he actually writes that in that latter day that, they would, that there would rise up a king from the south and he would bankrupt his Rome, he'd bank up the world's economy with his Roman soldiers. That's kind of interesting if we look at this as a revived Roman Empire as we picture NATO as that type of a force. And a lot of times everybody thinks that, well, Russia's the bad guy or uh, some of these other groups there, China and all the rest of them. But you know what's odd is the fact that it's the other way around scripturally. doesn't mean that we don't have great uh, a great military and that we have great men and women serving in our military. I appreciate that tremendously. But I don't want to see us just go and destroy everybody on the planet. I mean, where is the, you know, love your neighbor as yourself? Where, where is the truth behind do unto others as you would have them do unto you? I mean, we really got to think of some of the basic biblical principles taught by Yeshua himself. So many of us don't, though. But as you can see on the screen and behind me there, you see the, uh, the Chinese, President Xi had moved uh, some 150,000 troops plus uh, the S-300 missile defense system to his border there. He had moved also his uh, Dongfeng-41 nuclear intercontinental ballistic missiles over a year ago that, that, that have, I forget exactly how many warheads those can actually carry on them, very feared 
uh, nuclear ICBM. Uh, we see Russia was moving the bulk M. You see on these, these are not tanks, by the way, in the picture there. That is the bulk M that Russia used, specifically designed to shoot down Tomahawk uh, cruise missiles. And of course, both these countries have moved these forces to the border of North Korea. And they are not enemies with North Korea, either one. Although both countries, I will say this, both countries did go along with the UN resolution that uh, President Trump went to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, and they were putting on more uh, sanctions against North Korea, trying to get him to stop his nuclear ambitions. And so this time, both Russia and China did sign on along with that. Uh, but nonetheless, it's not stopping Kim Jong-un from continuing on. And as we saw this article here, and this is all the way back in April of last year, uh, or this earlier this year, when China deployed uh, to North Korea, according to the Yonhap News Agency, there are 150,000 troops. Now, China denied that there was 150,000 troops sent to the border of North Korea, but Russian source news agencies that we were able to dig up said that that was not true. They actually did it. So Russian intelligence was monitoring that situation, and they did see that move to their border. So very troubling indeed, and no doubt something that would cause the King of the North great anxiety. Why does it cause the King of the North great anxiety? It's the Middle East. The King of the North is more focused on the Middle East. And if you go back in Daniel's prophecy, you back up to verse 39, looking in that area there, verse 39, verse 40 there, the King of the North is more concerned about working with the King of the Negev or the King of the South, as it's re referred to in English, in order to do away with all those enemies around Israel. Because the King of the Negev is definitely a king of Israel. It's an Israeli leader. And the scripture totally mistranslated in English there. He works with him, not against him as it's been translated. Emo is with him. We'll go into that in just a little bit. But what else is causing him such great anxiety? It's not just the fact that Russia moves over the bulk uh, missile systems to the North Korean border or uh, China, surely with that big of a military force makes him nervous. But you know what? It's more about what Russia is continually doing. Russia's not taking any chance, friends. This map right here that you see in behind you, and as you can see there, that little place, that little white part there where I have in there, while, while, while war lingers with the DPRK and, and the U.S. and Russia, uh, uh, prepares. Both Russia and the U.S. are preparing for this showdown. Now, you'll see there in that box in red right there, that was one of the latest moves a few days ago where the Russian military, in one of their exercises, moved in 60 Topolo M uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles. It was just above Mongolia. And in fact, real quick before I t take away from there, if you look on that screen there, this is where it is above Mongolia, but it's an easy shot towards any U.S. bases as well if they decide that they feel that Russia feels that they're going to have to use that. Not only that, we're going to talk about the forces over here just uh, north there of North Korea. Uh, even out there, the, the huge fle uh, fleet of ships there, not far from the region there. Plus, Russia has ships down here closer to North Korea. A whole lot of those ships are down in there. They're not showing that on the map there. But this 60 ICBMs that got moved right there to, the, to, to, to north of Mongolia as part of one of their drills. All this happening, by the way, on October the 3rd is when this began. These drills began. 60 intercontinental ballistic missiles. You don't think that doesn't make the king of the north a bit nervous when he's trying to uh, take down Damascus, when he's trying to set up his false millennial reign in the Middle East to take over Jerusalem and divide Israel and make sure that uh, the West Bank becomes a buffer zone and push the Jewish people out of the city there all the way back as Micah's prophecy says? Sure he does. By the way, Micah 4, a lot of people don't even get Micah 4. Micah 4 prophesies that as a Jewish people, a remnant, the ones that halt, the ones that come in limping, like from the Holocaust, come in. And God says he'll be with them forevermore. But then he speaks about the leaders that are there in Israel. And then he asks the leaders of Israel, where's your king? Has your counselor perished? And he says about them, they will be going out of 
Jerusalem and dwell in the in the fields. And I think the remnant has to go as well, you know, because of the leaders. But God clearly in Micah's prophecy puts that blame on the leaders that are there, not for the sake of the Jewish people that are just looking for the coming of the Messiah, not for the sake of the Jews that want to live peacefully with their Arabic neighbors and not want to just throw them all under the bus. But it's those leaders that have sold out Israel to what? To Rome's agenda. That's the sad part of it. But it's not only this there. The Topolo missiles, Russia is moving those in. What else is Russia doing? Well, right here, this is in the Russian language. You may not understand that there, but the title on this, the crews of the SU-34 fighter bombers of the Air Force of the Eastern Military District. There's your title right there. They were in major uh, combat orientation going all the way up to the stratosphere, supersonic, one of the latest technology that Russia has. All this was happening there, not too far from where? From North Korea's border there. Well, they're far enough back to where they don't get too much interference with the U.S., but they're training, making ready. Same time that they're moving these nuclear uh, ICBMs as well, October 3rd. Then what else did we have? We also have a big training session going on as well. Another major issue that was happening there. So it's not just what's going on with uh, all the military activity, the moving of the Topolo, um, et cetera, the military, the, the fighter jets going on. That's not what really threatens the King of the North. But I think it's more what you're going to see right here. This here happens to be the SARS the RS-28, or as Russia deems it, Satan II. This is a nuclear warhead that is going to replace Russia's ICBMs that they currently are using. This is going to be deployed next year. In fact, this year here in October, they're getting ready to test this nuclear missile that carries upwards to 15 nuclear warheads on it and has the ability to destroy a country the size of France or a state like the size of Texas, only one of them. You don't think the king of the north uh, yeah the king of the north is not concerned about what's going on sure he is sure he is he has every 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 right in the world to be concerned about it all right so let's move over to daniel 11 we're going to back up like i was saying we're going to do and at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots with horsemen and with many ships and he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow as he passes through now this is not an attack on israel because he's going to overflow the countries all right, but notice what it says here. The, the translation is not correct here when it says, at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him. All right, now, and right here in Hebrew is where we have, this is where they're translating at uh, the king of the south or the Melech HaNagiv, but this is where they're saying push at him. But this here, Ein Mem Vav is Emo. And Emo cannot be translated at him. With him, yes but not at him. So the king of the house, excuse me, the king of the south pushes with him, the king of the north shall come not against him, but Aliyav, Melechatzephon, all right, and the king of the north shall come over him. Over him, really. And with what? Like a whirlwind or like a storm, with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. You know, it's kind of interesting because I've always stated many, many times before when I first, when God first revealed this to me, that coming over him like a storm. And I begin to show the images of our Hercules, the big C, it's not like a C-130, I think it's a C-17 called the Hercules that literally can carry what? The Humvees. And they can be dropped out of the airplane, carry huge loads of uh, military troops there that can be paratrooped down. What is it? They come over him, over Israel like a storm. For what? To overflow the countries. What? Lebanon, Syria, Iran. That's what that prophecy is, prophecy is speaking about. But as it goes down, then it talks about this tidings out of the east and out of the north greatly trouble him. And it's out of the east 
first China out of the north Russia and it was China that moved their military forces into that region first so there is a major problem going on and it's not just there with North Korea it's even tensions with Russia and the United States over Syria right now Russia gaining major headway in the country that's another thing that bothers the king of the north he had planned to take down all these countries as General Wesley Clark spoke about we would take down Iraq Iran Egypt Libya Yemen uh, you know, you name the list, Lebanon, uh, etc. Right now, they still got Lebanon and Iran sure to take out, and they've not finished off with Syria as they said they were going to do. So these things are about to take place, friends. One way or the other, they're going to happen. And this is prophecy that is actually being fulfilled. And I'm going to share with you something that I've, I never noticed before, but I've got to share this with you. It may even help in identifying who that king of the north may really be. Look at this with me in Daniel chapter 8. We're going to read it without changing anything yet, but then we're going to talk about the Hebrew here. And out of one of them came forth a little horn. Now, before I get into that, let me just say this. Remember, Daniel gets the vision. And it's, he's getting the vision about the, 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 the great horn, the, the ram. And then that he goat comes in there and he takes him out. That's the Greek empire knocking him out. But then that, 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 little, that ram, he gets his horns broke off. Then four replace it. And then one in the midst of those four, a little horn grows up, right? There's all kind of conjecture, conjectures that could be brought out about that. But let me just share with you. We're going to pick up right here about that one little horn. And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceedingly great toward the south and toward the east and toward the beauteous land. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven and some of the host of the stars it cast down to the ground and trampled upon them. Yet it magnified itself even to the prince of the host. And from the continual burnt offering was taken away and the place of the sanctuary was cast down. And the host was given over to it uh, together with the continual burnt offering throughout transgression. And it cast down to the ground and wrought and prospered. All right. Now we're going to go there first and then we're going to come back and we're going to go a little further down and read where Daniel gives the translation of the vision. But I think the translation will begin to make more sense to you when you begin to look at the way the wording is here. All right, so let's back up and let's look at this right here. And it says here, out of one of them came forth a little horn. Now it's odd that they translate the word little when they're looking at this word right here, mitzah, mitzah, excuse me, Mitzirah, Mitzirah, from a young woman. The little horn comes from a young woman. Never thought about it like that, did you? And, and you don't translate that little either. You can say the horn's little all you want, but that horn, Yotzakarin Echat, okay? And comes out a horn one. One horn comes out, all right? From what? From a woman. There's two things that you could think about here. And I'm just going to throw it at you. You could think of America as being a woman. The Statue of Liberty that represents our nation for freedom. She's a woman. All right? Or it could represent Rome itself. Because as a church dominating the government systems of the world, she's also represented as what? A woman. Considers herself to be the bride. Bride of Christ, correct? Notice then. That horn, though, which wax exceedingly great toward the south and toward the east and toward the beauteous land. All right? And they put here, and it waxed great even to the host of heaven. Now, another reason why you know it's a woman because of the verbiage here in Hebrew, ve tigadal, tigadol, all right, ve tigadol, the tav right here indicates the feminine gender here. So you literally would say, and she grew odd until this, this difficult, or even until, or even to the armies of heaven. 
There's a lot of conjecture I could go with this right here as I really begin to look at this. And some of the hosts of the stars that cast down to the ground and trampled upon them. I have a feeling this has a lot to do with what we see in Genesis where the sons of God saw the daughters of man that they were fair and they took into themselves wives. And of course, we know these sons of God, these were not Adam's daughters. This was actually the angels, the host of heaven, as you might say, the armies of heaven that came down to the earth and they what? They fail. All right. And this is exactly what it says in here. Vetafal aratzah min ha All right. And she caused them to fall. What? She caused them to fall. Aratzah min ha She caused them to fall down to the earth. Interesting, isn't it? And then it goes on. And, uh, and from the stars, see, and trampled upon them. Now, I can't say for sure that that's what it is or if it represents a military force with planes in the air. I, I don't know. I don't know. But it's interesting. Yea, it magnified itself even to the prince of the host. Again, the prince of the army. And from him, the continual burnt offering was taken away and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. That's obvious. That's Rome during Titus's reign who conquered Jerusalem and destroyed the temple. Just a, a conjecture. And the host was given over together with the continual burnt offering. And by the way, it doesn't say the word burnt offering. It just simply says the continuing, which is assumed that it's a burnt offering. And the host was given over to it together with the continual burnt offering through the transgression. And it cast down truth to the ground and it wrought and prospered. Hmm. You're going to see something with that, or that type, what that type of prospering actually is. But notice he throws or she, she throws the truth to the ground. The emet is thrown to the ground. The truth is thrown to the ground. All right. Now, look at this here then. Let's drop down then when the angel begins to, 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 uh, to tell you what this actually means. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. He shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper. And do, and he shall destroy them that are mighty, and the people of the saints. And through his cunning he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart, and in the time of security shall he destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, and he shall be broken without hand. And the vision of the evening and the morning, which hath been told, is true. And thou Shut up the vision, for it belongeth for many days to come. Interesting, isn't it? Now, again, <laughs> a lot could be said here. I like right here, and through his cunning, <laughs> he shall cause, they put on their craft to prosper. It's actually deception. It's very rare you'd ever translate that word craft. Through his cunningness, he shall cause deception to prosper in his hands. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. And in the time of security shall he destroy many. The time of security. That's actually a time of peace. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, and, but he shall be broken without hand. You tell me what you think it is. I'll leave it to you. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. If it's a blessing to you, stand with us. Support the work we do. We love you and appreciate your stand and your help. Visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Those of you that watch uh, this channel, uh, for the news broadcasts, but also are interested in teaching, be sure to go and subscribe to the Noon Institute. We will stop teaching here with the exception of prophetic insights on news. So keep that in mind. A lot of things are going up over on the Noon Institute right now. You're not going to want to miss it. Subscribe and move over to there. Shalom.